But the focus of my talk today is how to bring more flexibility to ultra low power Internet of Everything circuits and systems. So the outline of my talk is as follows. First, I will show you how the Internet of Things is requiring more flexibility because we have different variable energy needs and different applications also, and how to bring more flexibility to them with architecture partitioning, some new design techniques, and also at technological level by using FDSOI. So what about Internet of Everything? We have many, many different Internet of, many different Internet of Everything applications today uh, with a really fragmented market and with variable energy needs. Also, if we think about uh, uh, systems that are uh, deployed in our environments, they are uh, subject to many changes in their environment and the variation that they are, they are encountering is very large. So where is the real value when we want to design the Internet of Everything circuits and system. First, we need to provide a complete solution from hardware to software and system level, all integrated inside a single platform. For this, we need a lot of flexibility because we have many different applications and because we have a lot of variations around the systems. Also, in that sense, all improvements in terms of power and energy will be really mandatory and the key differentiators in those systems because we will always try to gain some energy. So my focus today is how to bring more flexibility with a single objective is to gain in power and energy. So if we have a look at the Internet of Everything applications in the range of performance and energy needs. So we have on the left side the range of picowatt and microwatt area and on the right side the range of milliwatt area. So we have here a list, a non-exhaustive list of Internet of Everything applications from tracking and monitoring up to video surveillance smart camera. So between those different applications we have very very different performance and energy needs but also inside a single application like for video for example we have also within the application different energy needs for example if the system is in the room it depends on if you want just to detect that the door is opening that then you will not need a lot of energy or if you want to detect that a specific person in, is in the room in that case you will need more energy in the milliwatt area if we just have a look here at the state of the art of uh, some systems, so fully integrated systems, more uh, focused on microcontrollers with some peripherals. So we have many different contributions today. Some of them are really focusing on the low energy area. They are always functional in the picowatt or microwatt, but in the same time, they are not able to deliver enough speed for really complex applications. On the other hand, we also have some specific systems in which we already have some wireless communication or even some specific sensors and complex sensors for which we need more computation. But in that case, we have more computation, but this is extremely difficult to reduce the energy of those systems when no, no performance is required. This is why a flexible system is really required for that kind of application if we want to cover all the energy and application Internet of Everything needs. So how to bring more flexibility to those systems? So flexibility is not only flexibility, but this is also low energy. So first of all, we can have some solutions at the architectural level with a kind of partitioning. We can partition the system into a wake-up part and a computing part. And we can think about a scheme that is fully energy-driven if we want to save energy and to have an autonomous system. At design level, we can think about self-time circuit or asynchronous circuit because we need to have very fast wake-up in that kind of systems and also we need a lot of robustness to the variations. Finally, at technological level, we can think about using FDSOI, so fu fully depleted SOI, because FDSOI will bring a wide range of operation from very low voltage to high voltage, and this allows a very high energy efficiency. So first of all, what about architecture partitioning? If we think about a partition system, we can reduce the energy in the wake-up mode. We have on the 
left side of the slide here, an always responsive subsystem. So this system is always aware of all the incoming events of the system. Once, when an event is incoming in the system, then we can wake up the on-demand subsystem, which is more power consuming, but necessary for computing demanding applications. So we can have two schemes in that kind of architecture partitioning. First, we can think about an application driven. The application is requiring to wake up the on-demand subsystem because we need to compute some data and we need, for example, to transmit uh, some data to the outside. Also, we can think about another scheme which is energy driven. In that case, we only wake up the on-demand subsystem when enough energy is available in the platform. And in that case, we can think about uh, an autonomous system which has a very long lifetime. So an example about an architecture partitioning. So at CA Lady, we are currently designing an architecture that we call Elliot, in which we have uh, the same partitioning of architecture that I previously mentioned. First, the always responsive subsystem is in charge of all the incoming events of the platform. We have different wake up features with radio, sensors, images or timers. We have a dedicated wake up controller which is fully asynchronous. This is what I will present just after. All the incoming events are waking up this controller and then we are able to wake up the on-demand subsystem which is in charge of the main computing of the system. In this on-demand subsystem, we have all the usual components of a, of a wireless sensor node. Microcontrollers, DSP for cryptography, for data fusion or imaging. And we have here a usual radio, power-consuming radio, sensors and a, a complete imager. At design level, if we think about how works a wireless sensor node, the wireless sensor node is fully event driven. It should be on, only woken up on, asyn on asynchronous events that are incoming the system. This is exactly how the asynchronous design is functioning. In an asynchronous design, the parts of the system act only on demand on an event rather than on a global clock. So the main advantages of that kind of design for the low energy internet of everything is first this even given behavior. And afterwards, something that is really a great feature for, for the wireless sensor nodes is the immediate wake up on an incoming event because an asynchronous design is always automatically in a sleeping mode and only woken up on an event without any need of a global clock. So we are automatically in a deep sleep power mode and this is really easy to wake it up with some events. Also, due to the clockless design, we have a high robustness to changing in the environment and also to supply level changes. So just an example about how to, uh, to design the architecture partitioning that I just previously mentioned. Here we have a usual microcontroller architecture with kind of ARM M something, for example, it can be any processors with its dedicated memory and some peripherals. We can think about extending this architecture to an asynchronous wake-up controller. In that case, the main processor is always in a very deep sleep mode and woken up only on the asynchronous wake-up controller demand. The asynchronous wake-up controller is automatically in a sleep mode due to asynchronous logic and woken up on different events like on interrupts. In that case, the wake-up controller will only be in charge of the current tasks, so wake up the system, small, uh, simple sensing, simple communications, and then wake up the main processor. This main processor will only be in charge of complex computing and mostly in deep sleep mode. If we go down now to more flexibility, we can think about the use of fully depleted SOI technology. Why? Because by using FDSOI technology, we can have a very useful use of the back biasing for very high energy efficiency. What does it mean? It means that we can reduce the leakage when in sleep mode and we can also increase the speed during the computing. So it brings really more flexibility and even at low voltage, when the system is functional at low voltage, we have very good performances and we can boost the performances of the system depending on the application's requirements. 
So an example about some results using FDSY technology and flexibility. So this is the design in FDSY 28 nanometer of a DSP. What we can sh see here is that depending on the back biasing voltage, we have very good performances different back biasing voltage are here for the different colors and you can see that at low voltage we already hit, reach 500 megahertz. Another very interesting feature is the flexibility due to back biasing. If we target a specific energy then we can increase the frequency by 60% at low voltage and by 14% at nominal voltage. So this brings more flexibility to the Internet of Everything system by giving more performances when required. So finally, to conclude my talk, we need more flexibility for today's Internet of Everything circuits and systems because we have many different applications in an extremely fragmented market. Also, we have different variable energy needs according to the applications or even within a single application. So the first solution can be an architectural solution by partitioning uh, the architecture to cover a wide range of application requirements. This skin can be either energy driven or application driven. Also at design level we can think about the use of asynchronous design because it will help to improve the wake-up latencies and it will bring a lot of robustness to the autonomous systems. Finally, high energy efficiency in a wide voltage supply range can be reached by use the use of FDSOI technology. Thank you. <laughs>